In this video, we're gonna be talking about Stanford University, the pros, the cons, and how to get in. Stanford is arguably the most prestigious university on the West Coast, uh, rivaled only by maybe UC Berkeley and UCLA in a few select uh, departments. And you can think of Stanford as MIT with athletes. On the one hand, Stanford is undeniably a STEM university. It's a leading STEM research university and it really attracts students from science, technology, engineering, and math. On the other hand, Stanford has won more team NCAA uh, athletic championships than any other school in history. So it also attracts elite Olympic caliber athletes. So really, if you excel in one of those two areas, either you're an elite athlete or you're some kind of STEM prodigy, then Stanford might be a great place for you. You can't talk about Stanford without talking about its pervasive hustle culture. And what this means is that when you go to Stanford, you're surrounded by students who are constantly peddling some kind of new app that they're creating, or they're trying to launch some type of startup venture. And in this way, the school really um, resembles UPenn, where everyone is always pushing for some type of uh, business enterprise. And this could be good or bad, depending on who you are. On the one hand, uh, it provides a stimulating entrepreneurial environment where all of your classmates and even many of your professors are thoroughly invested in helping you launch your tech startup. And many professors are known to um, encourage, uh, to mentor, and even financially invest in your uh, startup ideas. On the other hand, just like at Penn, it also creates this kind of um, toxic, exhausting culture where you never feel like you're quite doing enough. And so while Penn has something called Penn Face, which is where students uh, kind of pretend on the surface like everything is great when they're really suffering underneath, Stanford has the equivalent. It's called Duck Syndrome. And the idea is that when you look around at your classmates, everyone looks like they're kind of smoothly gliding along, but really just below the surface, they're all frantically paddling. What are some of the pros of Stanford? Well, the first is prestige. When you graduate from Stanford these days, it's like telling people that you graduated from Princeton or Harvard or Yale. It will not guarantee your success in life, but it undeniably gives you an advantage anytime you look to apply to graduate schools or internships or jobs, and it kind of moves you to the front of the line. A second pro is that Stanford has world-class computer science and engineering programs. And in this regard, it really rivals UC Berkeley and MIT for the best programs in the nation. And the benefit with Stanford, uh, which is similar to MIT, is that right out of high school, you don't have to apply directly to a specific college or to a specific major. You just apply to Stanford in general, to the university. And then once you get there, by the end of sophomore year, that's when you declare a major. So it gives students a lot of freedom and flexibility. A third pro is that Stanford has a beautiful campus. It's located in Northern California, which has a really pleasant temperate climate. It's never too hot or too cold. And the campus has really nice Spanish mission style architecture. So there's a lot of arches and fountains and palm trees. It's just a beautiful place to go to school. The only negative might be that the campus is so large, it's not really that walkable. Uh, most students get around by bike or scooter. And it's also something of a bubble. It's not quite located conveniently next to a town. So sometimes students feel a bit disconnected. A fourth pro is that Stanford isn't just for STEM. The STEM subjects tend to get all the glory, uh, but the school has top rated programs in English, psychology, anthropology, economics, environmental science, and a number of other fields. So when you look around, you'll definitely see a lot of pre-med students and future tech billionaires, but it's nice to know that that's not the only thing you have to do. And a fifth pro is Stanford's intro sems or introductory seminars. So Stanford has a wide variety of really popular introductory seminars uh, that are limited to 16 students or fewer. And they're meant to introduce students to a new field and to give them direct access to some of the top professors at Stanford. And these small seminars are a perfect gateway to do research opportunities, uh, to get internships, and to earn glowing letters of recommendation from your professors. What are some of the cons of Stanford? Well, the first is the poor social life. 
Despite being in a dreamy location, a lot of Stanford students complain about the social scene on campus. They complain that everyone's too busy all the time, and when you finally do make plans with someone, they typically flake on you. So it creates kind of this unfulfilling, superficial environment. Another con is the hit or miss professors. Stanford is a leading research uh, institution, and it attracts professors specifically because they're leaders in their field or because they're doing cutting edge research. Um, but as you can imagine, that doesn't always make for the best teachers. A third con is the hyper-competitive clubs. So just like at University of Pennsylvania, the extracurricular clubs at Stanford are incredibly competitive. So if you want to get into some kind of investment club or some type of entrepreneurial group, you're competing against all these other Stanford students, and many of them have less than a 10% acceptance rate. How to get into Stanford. The first thing you need to know is that Stanford is specifically looking for two things either elite athletes or STEM prodigies. So if you excel in one of these areas, then you definitely have a better chance of getting in. But it's important to know that every year, there are a lot of students who get into top schools like Harvard, Princeton, and Yale who don't get into Stanford because they excel in other areas. Like maybe they excel in the humanities or in the arts, or they are community activists or they're community leaders. And those types of accomplishments don't play as well at Stanford. You can apply to Stanford either through regular decision in January or through something called restrictive early action in November. And the regular decision acceptance rate is about 4% and the early action acceptance rate is closer to 9%. And you might think that applying early gives you some type of advantage, but truthfully it doesn't. Uh, a lot of students who apply early are recruited athletes and other VIP type candidates and their acceptance artificially inflates those numbers. So there's probably no real statistical advantage to applying early. In addition, because it's restrictive early action, you're not allowed to apply early decision anywhere else, and you can't apply early action to any other private universities. So it doesn't really make sense to apply early. And the other thing you should know is that while Stanford is technically test optional, and about half the applicants who apply there uh, don't submit their SAT and ACT scores. When you look at what students are actually admitted, you see that about 72% of admitted students submitted either their SAT or their ACT. So while you can technically apply to Stanford without submitting your test scores, if you really want to get in, you have a strong advantage by doing well on one of those tests and submitting your scores. I hope this was helpful. I'll leave my email in the video description. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly.